At this point, we have a pretty good model, a geometric model, an algebraic and linear algebraic model of the image formation process, but it's still in flat land. We still have a two-dimensional world and a one-dimensional sensor, and now we have to graduate and go into the three-dimensional world and the two-dimensional sensor. Fortunately, it's actually not gonna be that hard. Um, it's gonna turn out that we can more or less think about the two axes in the image, little x and little y, separate from one another. So let me just remind you, we've got the camera model over here, and remind, let me remind you also, by the way, I'm gonna ignore the negative signs for now, we're gonna stick with these, uh, with, the, with the positive version, because that's what the image looks like. I have little x is equal to fx over z. f is the focal length, x, z are the two coordinates, the, how much it's moved in the x direction and in the z direction, which is along the optical axis, and y is just fy over z. So now, I have a point out in the world, x, y, z, again, capital letters, and they image to the point little x, little y, defined by exactly the same perspective projection equation. That's really nice, and that sort of makes sense. And basically, I'm not gonna drive this out because the geometry is hard to draw in 3D, but basically, you can think about two slices of the three-dimensional world, one looking top to bottom, one looking left to right, and you just have two 2D projections for the x and y coordinates here. Okay, now that's the simple story where we are, have a single camera coordinate system and everything is specified in that camera coordinate system. That's the easy part. Now we have to, add a, we have to now generalize this where we have a world coordinate system, a camera coordinate system, and then a sensor coordinate system. So now what we have to do is relate a 3D world coordinate system, X, Y, Z, X, W, Y, W, Z, W, to a 3D camera coordinate system, X, C, Y, C, Z, C, through, well, really the same thing, a rotation and a translation. But now the rotation is just a little bit more involved. So what are we going to do here? Let's start at this end over here. We're going to take a point out in the three-dimensional world, X, W, Z, uh, Y, W, Z, W, and notice I'm back in homogeneous coordinates. I've got a one right here. I'm going to multiply that 3D point in homogeneous coordinates by a three by three rotation matrix. I'll give you the details of that in a little bit. And a uh, translation, TX, TY, TZ. So the rotation now is not just an in-plane rotation. It's a rotation around the X-axis, a rotation around the Y-axis, and a rotation around the Z-axis. Okay, so that's that little three by three matrix that you see right there. So that matrix here multiplies the world coordinate and gives me a camera coordinate, XC, YC, ZC. I then multiply that by the intrinsic matrix. What does the intrinsic matrix have? The focal length and the origin offset. And now I just have to deal with both coordinates. So I have F here on the diagonal. I have CX, CY in the last column here. And now I have more or less the same thing I had before, but I'm just specifying it for a three-dimensional world and a two-dimensional sensor. So let's look at it again. I've got a point P out in the world. It gets multiplied by an extrinsic matrix, which is now three by four. It gets multiplied by an intrinsic matrix, which is three by three. And there's that lambda again, which is just my unit conversion. So now my projection is three by four into a three by one. There's my image coordinates in homogeneous coordinates. Notice that little extra S hanging out there. And again, that matrix is not invertible. I'm now going from a four dimensional space into a three dimensional space, and I have exactly the same problem I had when I was living in Flatland. And then of course, just the final step here is we're gonna get rid of that homogeneous coordinate and we're gonna get actual pixel. And again, the reason we do this is simply so I can bundle up this rotation and translation into a single matrix. You didn't have to do it this way. You can stay in non-homogeneous coordinates. Um, this is what you will typically see in the computer vision literature because it's a little cleaner because you can specify everything with a single matrix operation. Okay, let's do an exercise. This is a great way to make sure you understand these uh, transformation matrices um, and projections. So let me go ahead and just read this to you. Write some code, please, that simulates the projection of a 3D cube, which you will define, of course, under perspective projection. Okay, 
the eight corners of the cube are, and I just give you the coordinates, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, et cetera, et cetera. So just think the three, the eight corners of a cube. Those are your points in the world coordinate system. Okay? Now, specify the translation and rotation around the x, y, and z axes in the world and build the three by four extrinsic matrix M. Now, I haven't shown you how to build the rotation matrices yet, but I'll show you that in a minute. Um, and then build the intrinsic matrix K with whatever focal length you want. Project under this projection. So you're gonna build this matrix here, you're gonna build this matrix here, which is the intrinsic, and then you're going to get your image coordinates in homogeneous, and then you're going to um, go into non-homogeneous by dividing by that third term, and then you're gonna plot everything and you should see a prospectively projected cube if everything went well. All right, so the one thing you need to know how to do now is to build that 3D, matri uh, that 3D matrix. So you can search this online, search for 3D uh, rotation matrix, or you can just pull it out of the slides right here. Um, this matrix right here is denoted, is determined rather by the product of three matrices. How much am I going to rotate in the X dimension? How much am I going to rotate in the Y dimension? And how much am I going to rotate in the Z dimension? And those are just the three uh, three by three rotation matrices. So you're going to specify theta X, theta Y, theta Z, build these three matrices, multiply them together, and that will give you this matrix right here. Um, specify whatever translation you want. You're then going to build the intrinsic matrix, uh, which has a focal length, and you can set these CXs to CY to zero for now. Um, and I would just for simplicity set TX and TY to zero and just play with the distance of TZ here. So build these two matrices here. Um, you've got the points X, W, Y, W, Z, W. I gave them right up here. And then you're going to go into the image coordinates and then you're going to project. So go ahead and pause the video. Uh, and when we come back, I'm going to show you my solution. All right, let's look at the solution to the exercise. So we're going to start with importing a couple of libraries. Uh, of course, NumPy, we always need NumPy. I'm gonna to have to build some rotation matrices. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and bring in uh, sine and cosine, and I'm gonna eventually plot some things. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring in matplotlib as well. So let's start by defining some points. What are the points in the world? They are the eight corners of a cube. We made it a unit cube. So they are 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0. Wait a minute, where's that extra one coming from? Why is there a four dimensional quantity? We're in homogeneous coordinates. We're gonna add that one there, so it's gonna hit the translation. And I just went ahead and added it at the very beginning just to simplify things later on. So I've got my eight coordinates here. And now what do I wanna do? I wanna define the relationship between the world coordinate system and the camera coordinate system. So let's start with the extrinsic matrix. Uh, I'm gonna just hardwire, you could have made this random, the rotation, Rx, Ry, Rz. Notice, by the way, I've converted these to radians because sine and cosine that I've imported work in radians. Be very careful with the degree and radian conversion. That's an easy bug to, to bite you. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and specify this. By the way, just think about Rx, Ry like this in the standard coordinate system. Rx is rotation like this, Ry is rotation like this, and Rz along the optical axis is rotation like this um, in plane relative, relative to the sensor. All right, let's go ahead and define some translation. I'm gonna go ahead and just set the TX, TY to be zero to make sure the cube doesn't fly out of the field of view. And I'm gonna set TZ to be 100 units away from me and the focal length to be one. When you wanna think about these units, by the way, you can think about millimeters or centimeters just to make sure you're thinking about sort of the right uh, type of unit. So typically we measure uh, focal lengths in millimeters, a 35 millimeter camera. And, if, and then think about what are the, what is the relative units to put something reasonably in far in front of you, say at three meters, for example. All right, now we're gonna define two matrices, the intrinsic matrix and the extrinsic matrix. The extrinsic matrix, of course, relates the world coordinate system to the camera coordinate system. And then the intrinsic matrix takes the camera coordinates and projects them into the sensor. Okay, so here's my extra, uh, intrinsic matrix, rather. I've got F00, 0F0, 001. 
So that's the diagonal matrix um, with F and the two top parts, one on the bottom. And CX, CY, I just left off because I don't want to worry about translation right now. But those would have shown up um, in, in that element, in that element right there. Now, the extrinsic matrix has to be built up in steps. The first thing we have to do is, is compute the Rx, Ry, Rz. That's what you see right here. Those are the equations that I gave you on the previous slide. And then I'm going to multiply those together to get Rm, which is the full rotation matrix. And now what I have to do is pack everything together. Because my intrinsic matrix K is fine, but my extrinsic matrix, I have to pack together the rotation. That's the first three by three. And then the three by one, which is the translation. So let's go ahead and do that right there. So I'm going to define M to be three by four. I'm going to pack in the translation into the last column. And then I'm going to pack in the rotation into the first three by three parts. And now I'm home. I've got my extrinsic matrix. I've got my intrinsic matrix. And now I can project. So I'm going to take my point in the world. Notice that I've transposed it because these points are row vectors. And I need my point to be a column vector. And I'm going to multiply it by the extrinsic matrix M and the intrinsic matrix K. And now I have sensor coordinates, but they are in homogeneous coordinates. I have three coordinates because that matrix K and M is a three by four matrix. I take a homogeneous point in four space, it projects into three space, and then I have to divide by the homogeneous coordinate to get uh, my two coordinates. And that's the last two steps that you see here. I'm just doing the division. I haven't shown you the plotting code, but it's just a bunch of plot commands. Um, and what you get is that cube right there. And did you get it right? Did you get it wrong? Well, there, you have to play around with this um, to make sure that as you rotate, you should see the cube rotate. As you translate in distance, it should get smaller. Um, and, and so play around with these parameters up here, and you should notice, particularly when you plot it as a wireframe, as I've done, that the, the cube will rotate in the way that um, you think it, it, it should. So, Notice here, by the way, that conceptually, there's nothing really complicated here. In fact, there's nothing really more complicated than the basic perspective projection equation. We're just mushing around coordinate system, but there's a lot of details that can, get wrong, that can go wrong. And this is why I want to go through these exercises, because those details really matter. But don't get bogged down in these details to make sure you are, making sure you're not understanding the conceptual issues here. And then the details always get, can get filled in later. All right. So now we're in pretty good shape. We have a full-blown 3D camera model under perspective projection. Um, we can specify things in a pretty general form where we have things out in the world in their own coordinate system. We have some camera, um, and we sort of removed a lot of the very special relationships between the world, the camera, and the sensor. Um, but this camera is still slightly simplified. We still need to do a little bit more. Uh, and we're going to start to keep thinking about this camera model, adding more and more complexity so that we can explain more and more about this physical imaging process that drives computer vision. So at this point, it's really important if there's any little gaps in what you have seen, if the matrix algebra is not clear, if the perspective is not clear, if those rotation matrices are not clear, if the homogeneous equations are, uh, equations are not clear, you got to go back and fill that in because we're going to keep using these concepts over and over and over again throughout the semester. So don't let anything slip through the cracks because we're going to pick it up here um, when, we, when we pick it up next.